Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. We're doing the 100 days to go until the GCSE Maths Revision videos. Um, I hope you find them useful so far. We've got 72 days to go, so if you've been watching the videos so far, I really hope you find them useful and well done for sticking with them. Today we're doing a statistics topic. We're going to be doing the estimated mean or the mean from group frequency tables. So we're going to be looking at the estimated mean. If you've got the revision cards, which I highly recommend, card number 52 is the estimated mean revision card. And if you've got that one, it'll go through um, how to find the estimated mean from a frequency table, a group frequency table, and also you've got the videos and questions on the back. But in this video, we're going to be looking at how to find the estimated mean. It's quite an important topic because I would say on the GCSEs, it tends to come up quite often. So make sure you know how to find the estimated mean. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to do it, and I'm going to give you some questions to do yourself. So remember to pause the video and to try those questions. Okay, let's get started. Hi, in this video, we're going to be looking at the estimated mean. So remember the means found by adding up all the values and dividing by the number of values. So if we had a list of numbers or even a frequency table, we can work out the mean quite easily by just either adding up the values if it's a list and dividing by the number of values, or if it's a frequency table, perhaps if it said number of cars owned, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and then the frequencies, we could multiply each of the values by the frequencies to get the totals, add them all up, and then divide by the total frequency. But if we've got a group frequency table like this one, we can't work out the actual mean, but we can work out an estimate for the mean. And let's have a look at this table. So this table shows us the price of some items, and we've got two items that cost more than no pounds, but less than or equal to 10 pounds. Six items that cost more than 10 pounds, but less than or equal to 20 pounds. We've got nine items that cost more than 20 pounds, but less than or equal to 30 pounds. And three items that cost more than 30 pounds, but less than or equal to 40 pounds. And we've been asked to work out an estimate for the mean. Now we can't actually work out the mean for this frequency table, this group frequency table, because we don't actually know the actual prices. We know there's two items that cost more than zero pounds, but less than or equal to 10 pounds. They both might cost one pound each, they might cost seven pound each, one might be one pound and one might be 9.99. We're not entirely sure. But we can work out an estimate for the mean, because if we've got two items that cost between naught and 10 pounds, what we can do is we can say, well, a sensible guess for them would be to be, let them be five pound each. We could say these two items cost five pound each. And here for these six items, they cost more than £10, but less than or equal to £20. Well, let's let them be £15 each. That'll be a sensible guess for the price of each one of those items. And these nine items, they cost more than £20, but less than or equal to £30. Let's let them be £25 each. And these three items, let's let them be £35 each. And then if we let them be those values, then what we can do is we can work out an estimate for the total, add them all up to get our estimate for the grand total, and then divide it by the total frequency, and that'll give us the mean. So to work out the estimated mean from a group frequency table like this one, what we're going to do is we're going to add on one column to begin with. So we'll add on one column called the midpoint. That column is the values that we're going to let each of the prices be. So here we say that these two items are going to be £5 each. It's the midpoint of this category. So we're going to say midpoint is £5. Here, midpoint of these values would be 15 The midpoint of these values would be 25 And the midpoint of these values would be 35 So the midpoint is the values we're going to let each of them be. Now remember, to work out the mean, what we do is we add up all the values. So here we've got two items, and we're going to let them cost £5 each. So if we had two items that cost £5 each, we would do 5 plus 5 equal to 10. Or another way to do it is to do the frequency multiplied by the midpoint. So I'm going to add on a column here called the FX column, and I'm going to do 2 times 5, so 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Here we've got 6 items, we're letting them cost £15 each, so if we do 6 times 15, so 6 times 15, that's equal to 90. We've got 9 items, we're going to let them cost £25 each, if we do 9 multiplied by 25, we get that's equal, 9 multiplied by 25, that's equal to £225. And then if we've got 3 items that we let cost £35 each, if we do 3 multiplied by 35, that's equal to £105. And that's it, so we've filled out this column called the FX column, and we find the FX column by multiplying the frequency by the midpoint. So 2 times 5 is equal to 10, 6 times 15 is equal to 90, 9 times 25 is equal to 225, and 3 times 35 is equal to 105. Now remember to find the mean, what we need to do is add up all the values and divide by the number of values. So we need to add up this FX column, and that'll give our estimate for the grand total. So that's equal to 430. So that's our estimate for the total price of these items. And then we need to divide that by the total frequency. So if we add up the frequency column, so if we add up these frequencies and we do 2 plus 6 plus 9 plus 3, that's equal to 20. So now to find our estimate for the mean, what we're going to do is we're going to take our 430, the sum of the FX column, and we're going to divide that by the total frequency, which is 20. And if we divide the total by how many values there are, so 430 divided by 20, that's equal to 21.5. So our mean is 21.5. Now remember in this question we're dealing with the price of something, so let's write that as 21.50. 
So that means our estimate for the mean price of these atoms would be 21 pound 50, and that's it. So just to recap, if you've been given a group frequency table like this and you want to find an estimate for the mean, you're going to need to add on two columns, the midpoints, because obviously we don't know the values, so we're going to use the midpoints as the values. And then you're going to add on another column called the FX column, and you're, and you're going to multiply the frequencies by those midpoints to find the FX column. And then you'll add those all up to get the grand total, and then you'll divide by the total frequency. And that'll give you your estimate of mean. Okay, so here's a question for you to try. So feel free to pause the video now and to work out an estimate for the mean age from this group frequency table. Okay, so if we wanted to work out an estimate for the mean age, what we're going to do is we've got these ages between 10 and 30, 30 and 50, 50 and 70, 70 and 90. We don't actually know the actual ages, so we're going to use the midpoints. So we're going to put on a column called midpoint, and we'll let's find those midpoints. So between 10 and 30, well, that's going to be the midpoint of those values would be 20, because in the middle of 10 and 30 would be 20. So we're going to pretend there's 12, 20 year olds, because that would be a sensible age to use for the ages between 10 and 30. Okay, the midpoint here between 30 and 50, that'll be 40. The midpoint here between 50 and 70 would be 60. And the midpoint here between 70 and 90 would be 80. So we've got our midpoint. So these are the ages we're going to let everyone be. So these 12 people, we're going to let them all be 20 years old each. These 20 people, we're going to let them all be 40 years old each. We're going to let these 16 people be 60 years old each. And these two people between 70 and 90, we're going to let them be 80 years old each. Okay, now we're going to add on the FX column. So if we had 12 20 year olds, well, we could do 12 20s added up together, or we could just do 12 times 20, and that's equal to 240. So if you added up those 12 20 year olds, or their estimate for the total of their ages would be 240. 20 times 40, 16 times 60 is equal to 960, and 2 times 80 is equal to 160. Okay, so we've completed the FX column. Now we're just going to add those up to get our estimate for the grand total. So if you added up 240, 800, 960, and 160, that's equal to 2,160. So our estimate for the total age of all these people would be 2,160 years old. Now we need to divide that by the total number of people. Now in the question it might tell us the number of people, but what we're going to need to do in this question is add up our frequencies. So if we do 12 plus 20 plus 16 plus 2, that's equal to 50. So there's 50 people. So if we divide the total, so our 2,160, by how many people there are, which is 50, that'll give us our estimated mean. So 2,160 divided by 50 is equal to 43.2. And that's it. So our estimate for the mean age is 43.2 years. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to find the estimated mean. So obviously, whenever we've got that group frequency table, we don't know the actual value, so we have to work out the estimated mean. So we use the midpoints of each of the categories. We multiply those by the frequencies to get the FX column. And then we can add those all up to get the estimated total. And then we can divide that by the total number of values. And that will give us our estimated mean. So we get the midpoints, multiply those by the frequencies, add them all up and divide by the total frequency. So I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I also want to take this opportunity just to thank you so far for watching these videos. I really, really appreciate all the comments, the likes, the shares, and I really appreciate that. And I really hope that I'm helping you with your revision. Another thing I just want to say is, obviously, you've got the other resources in Code Maps that will help you as well. So there's the revision checklist, there's the practice papers, and there's the other resources. If you go to Code Maps and you go down to GCSE revision, and you go into the higher sections, you've got things like the ultimate higher revision video, the company and booklet, there's practice papers, there's loads of resources there as well. So I recommend you have a look at those as well. So thanks so much for watching this video, and um, I'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock. Cheers. Bye.